May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O God, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Forgive me for one moment, I have so many pieces of paper, not only for this sermon and the 1030 sermon, but also for the adult education series that continues after the High Mass. I hope that everyone has the Caravaggio. Anyone does not have the Caravaggio? One of the incredibly reassuring elements of the New Testament is it's quite clear and no punches pulled depiction of the disciples, the first followers of Christ. They are not squeaky clean, polished plaster saints, but they are there, warts and all. That's an encouragement to all of us. More often than not, the disciples in the four Gospels that we have make mistakes. They get things terribly wrong, even though some of them are the authors, of course, of the four Gospels. This is very reassuring to those of us who make mistakes, and I think that's every single one of us. There aren't many who are flawless. I can think of a couple of people here, but on the whole, most of us have flaws of one kind or another. Even though the disciples get it terribly, terribly wrong on occasion, for example, after the healing of the man who was born blind, who says to Jesus, when Jesus asks him, what do you want? The man replies, I want to see you, which is, of course, the exact right question and answer. When just moments later, Christ asks the disciples, what do you want? They say, grant us to sit at thy right hand and at thy left in the kingdom of heaven. In the kingdom of heaven, grant us the greatest places in the heavenly regions. They get it horribly wrong. They persist, however. And that persistence is key. When they feel elated, as they do in this Easter season, they seek to follow Christ. When they are down, when they have made terrible mistakes, like asking to be the greatest in the kingdom of heaven, they nevertheless persist. The crucifixion, the betrayal, the denial, now those are slightly different situations. But the post-resurrection Christ, the Christ who appears after Easter, they pursue and are pursued by him. They continue to say their prayers. They continue to celebrate the sacraments as we do. So today's Gospel narrative of St. Thomas the Apostle, the apostolic patron and protector of this sacred place with which we are so very familiar, is actually a narrative on an occasion of timidity and fear. Just let me say a word about the doors being locked for fear of the Jews. This is not the easiest of sayings in the New Testament or indeed in St. John's Gospel. The phrase, the Jews, hoi 
Eudaoi in Greek is problematic, the translation of which can vary with shades of meaning and subtlety and nuance. Sometimes it is used quite pejoratively and in fact with a certain bitterness in the background, leaving a very nasty and unpleasant taste in the back of the throat. Occasionally it's used completely neutrally and then on some occasions it's actually used quite respectfully. There are many different shades of meaning to the phrase, but one of the most unfortunate elements is that in Christian history we have sometimes used, and I say we since we stand in that great long and ancient tradition of the Christian church, we have occasionally used, and sometimes persistently used, that phrase as an excuse for the persecution of our Jewish elder brothers and sisters. It is anti-Semitism of some of the worst kind that has been manifest. And phrases like hoi yuda oi have been used as an excuse for doing that. There are various options in the translation. Some people would use the Judeans, not terribly satisfactory and not really a solution at all. The Judeans referring to a particular ethnic group within Judaism from Judea. Some people, and this is my slight preference, have used the others rather than the Jews because it's referring to a specific group that is over and against Christ on some occasions. I'm not finally convinced of any of these solutions. So may I suggest something rather evangelical, which one doesn't often hear from this pulpit. Maybe if we realize that it is, in fact, we who deny and betray and take, cross, uh, take Christ to the cross, maybe we're beginning to grasp something of the meaning of that phrase. After all, it is, of course, in the person of St. Peter or Judas that we deny Christ, that we betray him, that we call for his death, maybe not in our words, but often in our actions. It is we who pierced and nailed him to the tree. The saints are heartening because they have mixed motives, failures in recognition, hopelessly misdirected allegiances, faltering, frail human love, little to no understanding of the message of love or inclusion or justice embodied in the one whom they attempt to follow, but they persist. The picture by Caravaggio expresses some of that doubt, some of that failure of recognition Caravaggio, of course, a rather complex, to say the least, and difficult individual who produced some of the most moving and beautiful art of the 16th and 17th centuries. Here, St. Thomas the Apostle is depicted actually piercing the side of Christ with his finger. The expression on Christ's face is moving 
and delightful. It is trusting, it is vulnerable, it is an expression of behold my hand and my side, thrust your hand into my side, and Thomas, St. Thomas here, his eyebrows and forehead are rising incredibly high upon his visage. If they were to rise any higher, they would be wrinkling the top of his head, his expression. And he pierces the side of Christ with his finger, while Christ is holding his hand, guiding him to faith and understanding. Doubt is not the opposite of faith. The opposite of faith is certainty. Jesus is not the answer to all our questions. He is the question to all our answers. When we imagine that we have it perfectly, wonderfully complete, whole and perfect, and we stand like the Pharisee, Lord God, I thank thee that I am not like other men, especially not like this tax collector. I give tithes of everything that I get. We imagine that we are so perfect, and yet, of course, we are so frail. I pray that as the disciples persisted in their seeking of Christ, and Christ persists in his seeking of us, that in this blessed sacrament we may know afresh the real and true presence of Christ, who comes to us in his risen life to offer us hope and faith and love. Christ the question to all our answers, Christ, the question to all of our imagined perfection. In the name of God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Ghost.